Did y'all look at the re recording that I said? It's Thanks. okay. All right. And I assume it's going to be there for the duration, at least I hope. I prefer put them on YouTube, but I don't think I have that option at this point. All right. So I'm going to just try this assignment. I'll just say, call it homework one. See if you see this. I... It's homework one, or no, homework 21, yes. And with that, I'll just take the, uh, I don't know how this is gonna work. It didn't put the last two parts in, but I thought I did this and then I have to do my 10 points. Uh, online, text, file uploads. I guess I put this as, no, this ain't a group assignment. Do, I guess I put a due date. So that would be Monday. use canvas normally. Okay, see if this works. <laughs> Not published, how do I publish? <laughs> Uh, save and publish. You must have a student or section selected. How about all of them? All right, now, if you're on Canvas, help me out here. Uh, can you see an assignment 21 in the home, I mean, homework 21 in the assignments? I don't even yes, have a can see it. Yeah. Um, it just, it says homework 21 parenthesis test. It's worth 10 points. Yeah, it's my first time trying this, so it's a test. It, okay. Yeah. All right, now open it up. I couldn't, uh, the stuff with the graphics didn't render well, but you have that. And I'm going to continue posting the homework on Canvas, but you can upload it here, I think. I'm not sure how this works. Normally, when you turn in a sign, Ruth, you had something you said you couldn't. Are you there? I see your name. Are you on? Ruth? Maybe she stepped away. Well, listen, is there a way, check and see if there's a way to um, upload the assignments. We can, there's a submit and we can choose a file. Um, All right, now I prefer you do this. If it's MATLAB, just, uh, it, you can do this, you can create a Word document, you can copy the MATLAB code, and then you can go, once you have a figure and it says edit figure, and it'll take any of your plots, like it'll, I'm sorry, edit plot, and you can capture the whole thing and then paste it into the Word document, create a PDF and then submit it, okay? For the uh, MATLAB portion. For the other portion that's longhand, just show me what you've done and take a picture of it and then include that with a Word document before you do it to PDF. Is that fair to everybody? I'm trying to do my best here to be fair and get everybody, but I'm trying to make sure that I see some tangible work as well as a MATLAB, okay? Y'all got that? Okay. I am recording this, so. I don't know how they got so much memory, but they apparently do. All right, how many people do we have here? 11, good. 
I'm sorry I couldn't get to you earlier. I was actually trying to figure out this radar course, which is another problem, along with all these other silly meetings that are coming up out of nowhere. All right. Um, well, that, so we're going to use Canvas to submit these things. And I'll, I'll give, I didn't put your assignment up yet or the DT, uh, sorry, the, the lecture, the actual material from the last time I taught this. But it'll show you DTFT, then DFT, and then the conversion back and forth that I need to talk about later on Monday. But what I'm going to have from now on, somebody sent me a couple of messages, several people did, about how I should structure the class. I'm going to have a template PowerPoint that I'm going to start working through. I'll put it in OneNote, the way Dr. New does. And then I'll have specific problems that we as a class will attempt. And you'll see what you come up with. And when you get stuck, then I'll try to work through you. But I'm not going to waste a lot of time on things that are just secondary, like MATLAB titles and stuff like that. I want to get to the essence of it, all right? Now, with that in mind, did anybody have any questions on the homework so far? Um, Dr. Baginski, this isn't really a question about the homework. It's more of a question about the syllabus. Oh, I um, adjusted it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Take a look. It should, be, it should be available. So is that the one that you bloated today? Yeah. Take a look, uh, just go to syllabus, and it should have exam one 30%, comprehensive final 40%, homework and quizzes 30%. That's what I was a little bit concerned about, uh, because we have a lab, and you included it at the beginning of the semester, and we're still having it, even... All right, I'll tell you what, I've been, I, what I'll do is take, all of this will be worth 75% of your grade. So take the final score there, weight it by 75, plus 25 times the lab, because you got one credit for that lab, right? Uh, yes, sir. I'll, I'll, how about if I adjust that syllabus later? But that's as far as my portion of the grading, your final grade, this is going to be from the classwork that I'm involved in supervising. 30% on first exam, 40% final, 30% quizzes. Now, the exams are going to be timed, and if I can use honor lock, I will. Uh, but what I'm going to say is you're, it is going to be open book, open notes which means the magnitude is going to get more difficult. You'll have to be fairly familiar with things and not going to be trivial. It won't be anything like the last tests. I mean, if you look online, my previous, these are going to be, these are going to be real kind of tests I was used to. Uh, they'll be challenging. They'll be timed, but if you know what you're doing, you should be able to go through them very quickly. And there will be more pictures and things like that. You'll have to translate into mathematical functions. Uh, the other thing I'm going to try to tell you is I'm trying to do this in a very fair way. I'm not trying to scare people. But what I want you to do is keep up with the homeworks as they're given, because right now we're behind by about a week as far as where I'd like to be. And we still have the F, I mean, DFT, FFT, the Z transform, the relationships between Z and S, the Laplace transforms, stability, and then overall um, a finite impulse response and uh, filters and some other digital filtering. So we have plenty left in the course. How many do we have here now? 11 still. So with that in mind, questions about any homework to date? The, the DTFT stuff is pretty straightforward. And I'm just going to tell you this much, the similarities to the Fourier transform. Now this is the, this is the uh, infinite series DTFT. When I say that, maybe I should show you what I'm talking about. And always helps to have a picture and not just a voice. All right, hold on. Hey, Dr. Bianchi. Yeah. Um, just a quick question. Um, in terms of you saying the test we'll take will be harder in terms of magnitude. Yeah. Um, with us only having one test, um, wouldn't that be kind of difficult? Like if we really. No, no, no. Because if you know what you're doing, it, it, you'll get it. All right. It's, and remember, you're going to effectively get one midterm, one final, plus okay. all the quizzes and homeworks. Okay. All right. it, it's, I'm trying to do this fairly. Have you ever had, have you guys had rigs yet? Have you had anybody that gave you take-home tests? No. No. Not all right. yet. Well, the nature of a take-home test is something that's more like a graduate test, where now the depth of material is the thing they focus on, not little things like transform this to this. They're going to give you, it'll be something where, you're going to have to put two or three things together to find the answer. It's going to require you to have a keen knowledge of Fourier, Laplace, I mean, DTFT, DFT, 
uh, in order to do it. And you're going to ask me for, for instances, and I will give you for instances in a little bit, but for instance, if you, I'm, I'm going to cast the screen. So bear with me there. I'm going to try to cast the screen. And what you should see is uh, the, the previous homework 21, right? Yes. Everybody see that? All right. Now, here would be something. Suppose I take the thing I have in yellow here, and I put a T squared right there. All right. And then instead of U of T, I make it U of T minus 5. Okay, now all of a sudden, instead of simple modulation, what you have there is a time shift. You've got a T squared operator there, and you can go at this several ways. If you're doing it just Fourier, you would probably do it in terms of, first I'm gonna take T squared times E to the, or, or just E to the minus two T times U of minus five T, call that X of T. Get that transformed first. Now when you have that, you have an X of T times some other stuff. If you go x of t times t squared, well, that's a double derivative. You would have j squared times a double derivative with respect to omega in the omega domain, x of omega, right? With me, people? Here, I'm using the properties. And then you would go ahead and multiply it by cosine of omega t to get the modulation property. Now, your final form is going to be more complicated. And it would have to be rendered exactly. But that's the level of difficulty increase. And that's, this is just continuous time. So it would be adding more parts to a question. More to complexity. So more the depth complex. of your understanding would be tested. So if you understand how to do all the homeworks fairly well and like can do them without like looking at your notes, would you, is that a good metric for? Yeah, but I'm gonna, the homework's going to start getting more difficult. Okay. So this is a typical kind of homework problem now for today. All right. I mean, homework's in, inherently open book, open notes. Go ahead and try that one. You can do it. You've got all the tools to do it, but you have to know how. You have to know where to start. Your gut feels, if you've been doing these things, should tell you, well, the problem is U of T minus five. That's the gut problem. So right off the bat, why don't you take E to the minus two T times U of T minus five, just bludgeon it out with the definition of the DTFT using that geometric series. You all with me? Now, once you have that, now you can go ahead and say, or you don't even have to use the geometric series. You can use the integration, the fundamental integration. I'm sorry, the integration, because we're not in the DTFT. If you just have e to the minus 2t, u of t minus 5, times e to the minus j omega t, dt, from there it would go from 0, or I mean from minus 5 to infinity. That's a doable integral. Once you have that, then you have it times t squared. Take that x of omega and, and put a j squared in front and take two derivatives. Got me? Not one, but two. By the way, Mathematica, MATLAB, and I think Wolfram Alpha, I don't know about that, and MATCAD all have the ability to do symbolic mathematical operations quickly, especially Mathematica. So you can do that one literally with a computer. You don't have to do it longhand. Got me on that? Now, some of you are going to do this. You've already thought this through. Well, I'll just stick that in to something that does symbolic Fourier transforms. I'm going to try to put enough problems in there so it can't be, you can't do it just that way. You're going to have to use properties. Are you with me on that? That U of T minus five, by the way, is the one that'll kill them. Uh, even symbolic integration doesn't handle that well. Dr. McGinsky, two things. Um, first thing, so for, is, is the first test still just going to be through uh, what it was previously, which I now forget, like the Fourier series, I think. It's, I'll tell you what it's going to focus on. Um, it's going to focus on convolution. Now, I have to test you on this new material. It's some, I'm going to include it, but I'm going to, I'll be very clear. If you, have, if you have convolution, I'm going to cut out discrete time convolution. I'm only going to ask for continuous time. Okay. And remember, this is the take home. So it's literally, it's one of those things where, uh, or I shouldn't say take It is an open resource exam, but it's timed. Pardon my language. I, I misspoke. It'll be a timed exam, but it'll be open resource. I assume people are going to Google. I assume worst case scenario. We all have to. I'm just real about this. But by the same token, you can Google that all you want. You ain't going to find a solution. 
to this and a lot of the other things I'm going to come up with. But if you know what you're doing, and since some of you are asking, what are you really talking about? Just talk to me about this one. If that's the problem right there, and I assume you all can see that. So how would you, oh. I do not like when this thing doesn't do what I want it to. So if you start right there, what I said is the first thing I want to do is get rid of everything I don't need. So I get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that too, right? That's what I'm after, that transform, right? What would that transform be? Isn't that the integral of e to the minus 2t times e to the minus j, j omega t dt from minus 5 to infinity? Yes. Right. And what is that going to render? Um, Matter of fact, you can do it so many different ways. Let me just tell you. Omega plus 2. I can literally do this. I can make that t minus 5 here. Now, let me just do it. I'll just show you brute force and awkwardness how to do it. I don't want to get off on this one right now. So that's going to be from minus five to uh, infinity. Uh, then it's going to be here, e to the minus two t right, times e to the minus j omega t, small t, dt, right? Mm -hmm. That's a very doable integral, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And that's x of omega. Now, once you have that, once we have this, then what happens? Now, that's multiply. That's this part right here. Now, I get rid of that. And that. Now I just call that x of t. So I know x of t goes to x of omega. And it's up to you how you want to do it. I see a t squared there times x of t. That's two derivatives in the omega domain on x of omega with a j squared. Correct, class? Mm-hmm. How many we got here? How many are still in there? I can't see. 12. Well, okay. 11 people. That's okay. But I mean, less me, so it's 10. That's still a good number for Friday afternoon. It's 452. So the, uh, there are many ways to get the same answer, all right? That, this is one of many. So I would take two derivatives of this right here, this x of omega with respect to omega. And I'm, I use small omega. It's actually supposed to be capital of omega. Uh, then, and that, no, I'm sorry. It is small omega, my bad. Anyway, once you have that, now I would take j squared times two derivatives of that. Then I get rid of the t squared, right? Times x of t, right? Dr. Baginski, quick question. Um, I might just not be seeing the process quite correctly. So x of t is equal to all of that times x of t again? Uh, what I'm saying is this is my new x of t. Let me call it x1 of t because I am okay. with that. Let me... Um, I guess I was trying to do this in a hurry and I shouldn't have. That's x1 of t, okay? Then right. this would be x1 here. Right. All right. Now, if x1 of t, I assume this would be x1 of omega. So when I have t squared, let me just do this. When I have t squared times x1 of t, and I want the transform, right? Well, what's that going to do? That's going to be j squared, right? Times d, d, and this is omega, right? Of, it's a second derivative, by the way. I'm sorry about that. I didn't get that right. Second derivative, actually, the square would be there. And then it would be times x1 
Y'all with me on that? Mm-hmm. All right, now we've got rid of the T squared. You can put a two in front of there if you want. Now we've got rid of the two. Now we have a times cosine of 10T. That's the simple modulation property. Follow me? And that would be the way you could solve it. Uh, but if you don't understand things, what you would probably try to do is something reckless and foolish. You would probably say, well, e to the minus u of t times, t, u of t minus five times, this stuff really means a, it's a phase shift in the frequency domain. In truth, there will be one, but because uh, the exponential right here doesn't have the t minus five in it, it wouldn't work. The whole function has to be, every place t appears, it has to be t minus five to do a shift operator. With me, guys? All right, so um, if you don't Dr. Know Wiginski, you... um, for questions like this, like potentially on the test, will we have like partial credit for work if there's going to be more, you know? Involved? Yeah, there'll be, there have to be some, but the problem is with this, if um, it has to do with the magnitude of the air, <laughs> it's hard to be exact about this, but if I see somebody put down one, how do you get but I mean, I mean, like, because it'll be on canvas, like, I mean, it can't be like a multiple choice test. Like, how oh. is that going to work? Well, no, you're going to take pictures of it, right? Oh. It's going to be a time test. You're going to give me snapshots. And then, you know, five minutes before the thing's going to be closed down, it's basically stop your work, take pictures and put it on. Anybody doesn't meet that time frame, the, the, the requirement then they'll get zero for the whole thing. So it's gonna put you in a motivated mood to make sure that you submit on time. There'll be no forgiveness if you don't submit on time. Unless, I don't know, the whole internet dies. But I gotta draw the line somewhere. Okay? Everybody? All right, now, I mean, that's, so that's a logical question. You understand now when I say order of magnitude difficulty? That to me is a more difficult problem. <laughs> so what did, what did you say would be the, the topics for this test then? You got through convolution, convolution and said no discrete time. No discrete time convolution. So continuous time convolution. There'll be pictures. Right? So you'll have to know what functions, how to render. them. The second thing it's going to be is on Fourier series analysis. Remember that. The trick was the derivative method. You won't be able to Google that stuff either. You remember you take derivatives until you get impulses? Everybody? Yes. And then once you have impulses, then you get the coefficients in the prime or double prime or triple prime domain. And you have to divide those coefficients by J n omega to the nth power, where n's the number of derivatives. A lot of times you break them up into two functions, possibly three. And when you're finally done, you give me values, you, you actually obtain the value for C of n for certain values of n, say one, five, something like that. You've done that already. Now, then another thing to consider, and this is important, uh, when I'm going to be giving the test, that there's going to be Laplace transforms on there. And there's going to be Fourier. Now, I'm going to give you Fourier transforms and Laplace transforms. That's four major topics. But I'll throw on a bonus that'll be ev evaluating something with the DTFT. With me? So you would have four major problem sources, one, maybe five, 10 point, point bonus, something like that with a DTFT that'll keep you honest with this last, last stuff, all right? So for the Laplace, could it be something like a circuit problem? Or? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. As a matter of fact, I like to put primarily block diagrams with feedback loops or circuits on there because like that's what we are, we're electrical engineers. Okay. I'm not gonna, It'll be as ap applications oriented as feasible. I'm not going to try to, you know, I'm not going to ask for proofs, and, but the homework should be representative of the types of questions. Remember the block diagram, the feedback, negative feedback? Remember realizing a circuit with um, R's and C's and op amps? Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff. Or analyzing a circuit that's realized that has op amps and, you know, basically getting the transfer function and then the impulse response. So you said DTFTs are going to be a part of it if it's the bonus? Yep, five points probably. If it's going to be 10 points a question, 
they're, they're worth each 10. That's the way I usually do it in the bonus of five. And if you know your stuff, you'll do very well, I have a feeling, because this is the way graduate courses work. But if you don't, I mean, it really, the bottom drops out. <laughs> you don't know if you do or not until you do it. Yeah. Well, uh, you'll get a good feel if you're doing homework and you're, not, you're almost laughing at it because it's so simple. Then, then you know you're set. No, I'm not set. <laughs> I'm not set. <laughs> yeah. It's better to feel you're not good at it than to feel you're good at it. Be paranoid or be concerned, better word in this day and age. All right, um, now that's... Do we well, also have a date for it yet? Have you decided? Let me tell you this much. I want to go through the uh, honor lock thing, and I have to, in fairness, before I give this. Uh, and then once I go through it and I understand how to use it, uh, I'm going to try to go through it on my own this weekend. And if I have questions, I'm going to ask this uh, person who's available all the time. There's something that came out, that, a message for all engineering students. I don't know what it says. It's from Shannon Price. Just now. You can look at it. I think it's about software. It's just saying that all software is available remotely through the virtual lab in Citrix. Mm -hmm. So that's... But if you want to use Octave, go ahead, or Python. Octave's free, Python is too. All right, any other questions about the, the prior homework? We did the sampling business, right? Now, one thing I'm gonna tell you, in this homework, is it this, one? this video that I have right there is a good video. It, it, in that video, in the next video, do a great job at talking about the DFT and the, the DFT, DTFT, and a comparison, how to get that and compare the data directly to what would be the Fourier transform of that data. Okay. By the way, how did you get that backdrop, Lydia? I don't know. Are you guys just right clicking on something and putting in a backdrop behind you? Um, I think it's a setting in Zoom. Um, I think, let's see. If you go to settings and then I think it's screen share. Um, you can choose like a specific background. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh no, rude. Yeah, I kind of like that one for myself. I, I see we are focusing on the right subject material. <laughs> No. At this point, it's five o'clock. I can focus on almost anything. <laughs> but anyway, I'm doing this pro bono. So uh, what I'm asking you to do is watch this video. Can you all see what I'm talking about over here? Yes. Everybody's having too much fun looking at some crazy. Uh, if you've, have you all watched it or not? Just tell me. Not yet. No? Mm -hmm. I think oh. that one yeah uh one of What's the that? links that you sent was to a playlist of all your videos yeah you had to put it down the specific one the, the one is uh this one is i think the it'll just say the 26th video i think uh the first one that you linked in um 2020 just links to the lecture one for us and oh, it doesn't gosh. sorry it's not that one yeah, and you have to like, there's no uh, like titles or anything, so you just have to go through and guess and find out which yeah, one. Yeah, like they're, they're only separated by numbers. There's two. Hold on. I, I do think that yesterday and, Lydia and went they, through yeah. and she found, I'm pretty sure it's that video based on the thumbnail. And I, we, mm -hmm. uh, I, I watched the video yesterday and it, it detailed the DTFT and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's already in the group me. Yeah. All right. There should, it should be the, I think it's 22nd. I think the 27th Seventh is what's is in the group me. I think so. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Let me just check that it is in fact is. in the group me. It's right it there. You can be. expand that. Oh, it is? Um, okay. Yeah. It, I like. And they posted it in the chat this morning as well. So. Okay, thank you. Oh wait, yeah, I did watch this one actually. Th wow, is this the second wow. one you sent, Lydia? 
No, no, this is where it goes from sample to DTFT. And then at the end, the one right after this is the one where the DFT is compared to the Fourier transform. Yeah, this is one. This is what I was trying to do online. Yeah, this is a good one. The one right after this is good too. Those two are all about the last couple of things we talked about. I'm just populating a table with common transform pairs. Yeah. All right. Now I'm creating the DT, DFT part. <laughs> All right, you can mess with that later, but um, other questions? Is the exam time gonna be 50 minutes? Like, How about if I give you an hour and 15? Uh, Ruth, is that gonna kill you? Do you have to jump into another course or not? Um, it depends on what day it is. As long as it's not Wednesday of next week, that's fine. All right. Then it won't be Wednesday of next week. Um, cool. But what I'm going to do is on Monday, hopefully, I'll have a an assure, uh, I'll have a good feeling about this honor lock business because I don't know what I have to provide and what they provide. And I'm learning too many other things. By the way, uh, my uploads, I mean, my download speed here is about a hundred and 11 or 100, 110 or 111 megabits, but my upload is only about 12, 11 to 12 megabits. And I don't know if there's a way to get rid of that asymmetry. Have you noticed this thing? Your upload? Yeah, that's pretty common. Um, like, uh, very standard is like 40 down, seven up. So, is there any way to make it symmetric? It's no, no I mean, upload is always lower. Yeah. Pay for it. Pay for yeah. extra upload. <laughs> I thought I had the fastest internet speed. Which do you know which speed you guys have? Um, I think I have about like fifty down and then maybe ten up. Uh, well, I'll tell you, I'm not sure where the bottleneck is, but and some they couple of people said it's the asymmetry in the router, or, or I'm sorry, in the spectrum provided um, modem. I don't know if that's true or not, but I've been told that um, that it's more or less something that Spectrum can control, and they can throttle activity too. Apparently, they throttle Netflix. Uh, so when things start falling off, I mean, when I got cut out in your class, what twice today? Yeah. I, that's not on the university. This is on my link that I thought I had the fastest internet, but I'm gonna. Try to scale I think, it up. I think on the on the modems they usually do like channel bonding where you, they can uh, increase the capacity, which the, all that can be done from your ISP side. And but general just bandwidth issues can also contribute. Like I, I know, like I, 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 my family works from home now, and so like we're having some bandwidth issues. Well, I'm not the only one that's got problems. A whole lot of people have, and people in rural areas that use satellite, they're basically, they, they so have well. to record their lectures and they, they can't do any kind of real time. Yeah, I just checked mine. I'm at 275 download, but 21 up. Uh, are you on Spectrum? I am. Where, are you in Auburn? Yes. Are I'm about, about a mile off campus. That's about a mile, two miles actually off camp. I'm going to have to check and see. Do you know what plan you have? Uh, well, me and my wife do a lot of video gaming, so. <laughs> Never, mind. Never mind. I pay. Yeah, I, I pay for the higher, the higher end. I may end up doing that too. Um, I thought mine was fine until this thing happened. Anybody else having problems with their internet? We only have consistently two people in my apartment when we typically have four. So I'm living the high life right now. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, back to the homework. Any other questions about the homework? Yeah, Dr. McGancy, can you finish that number six DTFT problem? Uh, is this the plot of it or what? Oh, wait. Like actually like hand work it out. Well, you're turning this one in, right? Right? Yeah, I guess. Six. If you turn it in first and then do it later, that's fine. Uh, well, just look at this, all right? 
think about this now, practically speaking. If I have that right there, and you want the DTFT of it, I've already told you how to create T to get a whole bunch of samples, right? Remember, I use, use linear spacing from the beginning, which would be zero. You choose how many points you want. You can plot that function, first of all, it's a minus, by the way, and I don't know why the minus doesn't render there, but that's supposed to be minus 2t. Let me try to do this. That's supposed to be minus 2t times t times, so I took the u and t in front. Follow me? Can you all see that screen there? All right, now I told you how to create t. That's linear spacing from zero to some in point. Well, before you, why don't you just plot that out, create a lin space, and here's how you sort of do it. e to the minus 2t, the argument 2t right here, when that is about five, it's basically killed the exponential. So five would be equal to t 2.5 seconds, right? So double it, make it five seconds. So take t, linear space from zero to five, and have maybe 1024, maybe 2056 points. Just make the two to the end points, a ton of them. Then plot the thing and see if it's basically quenched at that time. Now the t in front of it's gonna make it sustain a little bit longer, but not much. The exponential will kill it. Once you have that, then you know you've got an adequate sampling of most of the signal. Take that and write, just do the DTFT of it as shown. Uh, you know, then, I mean, you can literally, I showed you how to do this, that basically T becomes what? NTS, right? And then T here becomes NTS. So you break off a variable E to the minus two TS as A, and you've got A to the N times N. So if you have A to the N U of N, you get the transform of that. We know what that is. Then when multiplied by N, you put a J and take a derivative of that with respect to omega, capital omega, right? If you wanna know what property I'm using, I'm using tell me they don't have n a to the n on this one. Probably don't. Well, it's here somewhere. There it is. See, multiply by n is going to be j derivative with respect to omega of x of omega. Can you all see that? Make, can you see what my cursor's on right there? No. I'll put a asterisk. Can you all see that? Yep. Okay. That's the theorem. N A to the X of N. Okay. Now I ask you to plot it. So that's the reason I'm saying also these, um, I somehow erased that part, but I want the DTFT for it that you work out. And I want the plot and the plot we went over today too, right? All right. Dr. McGinsky, could you scroll back up to the uh, picture, the, the transformation pairs? That one's not rendering in for me. I'm just going to take like a screenshot of it. That, that's the same for me. Could you put it in the group me, please? You can't see this? No. Yeah, it... I'll, I'll do it. No worries. Thanks. It, who can see it? I can. I, well, I can see it now. I mean, I just took a screen capture. That's all. We we can see it on your end through your screen transfer, oh, but we can't oh. see it in our OneNote. I wonder why. It shows that the the first two show up at least for me, um, and this I know particular... I know that there's an image there. OneNote shows that there is an image, yeah, but an it, image it doesn't load the image. It's just a white blob. Yeah. Hey, um, send me a message if that's the case. Those are most of those are in your book, except for the cosine and the sine. Okay. You see that cosine and sine right here? These are really good because I, I tell you, you're going to use them all the time. With me? And how many participants do we have now? It's not telling you. That's all right. I see about three, six, nine, 10, 11. I see 11 people. I don't know how many are there. 
All right. Other questions? That's, this is the stuff we did today, remember? Working it out, basically getting it down to that. Okay. Anything else? Are you willing to take general questions? Like, I, I've had some issues with inverse sure. Laplaces, but if sure, you want to sure, wait sure, till... sure. Which, which okay. inverse Laplace, you don't do. We, what we do is partial fraction expansion, don't we? Yes. Um, let me see if I can find the one that was giving me trouble here. And we'll break it off in another five minutes or so, unless there's something pressing that comes up. Are all you, I'm looking at Lydia, Nick, and Ruth. You're all in Auburn, right? Yes. Is anybody else in Auburn here? Is Jacob, are you here? Uh, yes, I live here in Auburn. So that's Christopher. four. Nia, are you still in Auburn? Dania? You're here in Auburn too? Cole? Yeah, I'm here in Auburn. You're Spencer? Uh, I'm not. Okay. Well, I'm surprised there's so many people still in Auburn. There, there's a lot of students still in Auburn. Yeah, I'm finding that out, but they're not supposed to be, I guess. <laughs> well, the thing is, a lot of people live off campus, so oh yeah, I don't know about other people, but I know if I go home, I'm not going to do schoolwork. So <laughs> yeah, my family is very distracting. <laughs> Just staying in my apartment here in Auburn, since I mean I pay for it, and I have to, you know. It's a great place. So golf courses are still open. <laughs> I went play yesterday. <laughs> well, uh, this weekend, if I do one thing, I'm hoping to do it's to go fishing. That's on my to-do list. At the Lord willing. Huh? Okay, uh, go ahead, Nick. All right, so I, I found it. It's um, it. Do you have your book handy? It may be easier just yeah, to tell you where in the book. Um, yeah, I do. I got it right here. Okay. It's uh, chapter three, problem can you 17. See my, my image or not when I cast the screen? Can we can you see, see my face anywhere or not? Mm -hmm. We oh, can. can. Good. All right. It's uh, chapter three, problem 17. What page? Um, it's on 126. All right, page 126. Um, and either A or B, um, they both have me stumped. One twenty six. Which problem again? Uh, problem seventeen, A or B. Either one will do. All right. Um, let's do this. First, uh, let's do B. All right. So you can see that screen. I'm just going to type here. You know that four o. Oh, oh, pardon me. 4 over s, right? That would render as what if you went to the other domain? That's just 4, right? Times exp to the minus, or excuse me, 4 u of t, my bad, right? right that's that one. Now, when you have 4 s over quantity s squared plus nine. If we want that one, probably the easiest way to do it is this. Let's come down and look at some transform pairs and let me see if I've got them. So I don't have to spend too much time. I don't know if I got them here or there. Nick, you said this was Laplace, didn't you? It, it, we can, yes, it I is Laplace. Laplace tables too. But here, I'll just tell you what I'm thinking. If I look at Laplace right here, I know that what? If I have... I think that's, what is that, four cosine three T? Yeah. I think you could simplify it down to like a cosine function, right? Yeah. Uh, here's what it is. And I'm just say cosine of, uh, I'll just call it omega naught T, or just omega T here, u of t, I know that renders as, as simply 
a minus s, right? Or excuse me, a plus s, plus s over quantity a plus s squared, right? Plus, I'll tell you where it is in your book if you've got one second if you're wondering where I'm doing this. Yeah, I think it's S over S squared plus omega naught squared. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah, I, I was breaking it. Uh, sorry, you're right. Plus omega squared. And what one is that? This is 14 on page 97 if you look there, right? Correct? Mm -hmm. So you've got a 4S there, right? So you need an A. Now watch this. I'm going to give you an A right off the bat. I know uh, for this one, actually don't even need that. It's easy. Right. I, I think I see it now. A should be zero. And so it is just a cosine where yeah. omega is three. A is zero. That's exactly it. Yeah. And if A is zero, then it's just going to be the cosine of Omega. As a matter of fact, he should have that one. He does. It's on. It's eleven. I, I must have missed it yesterday, but I I see it clearly now. That's that's Thanks. how you do that one. And the All prior right. one that had the negative sign in. That was four cosine three t, right? What's that? I, that's what it should be, I think. Yeah, because you okay. scale it. The other one, all right. Uh, the one with S minus four over S squared plus 16, just do four S over S squared plus 16, just like we did now. Instead of nine, we'd have 16 there. And then you have minus 16. Here's what I'm getting at. Uh, Y'all agree on, this is part A. He has two. All right, what does two go to? When we have a constant, what does it go to? Laplace. Delta. I show you what page of those tables? 98. Or... Delta? It does it does it go to a delta or for a constant? In Fourier, it goes two pi delta of omega, right? Where is his thing? In Laplace, wouldn't like a two go to a delta t minus two, or or is it two delta t? Or a delta delta no? That doesn't seem right. Mm. I think it's just two delta t. Yeah, I think it's two delta t. One for one second. Uh, it's really just U of T if you have, remember these things have to be, um, oh, wait a second, a constant is delta T if we're, we're talking about Laplace, a constant in the frequency domain is delta T in the time domain. So the function he had there, let me look at it again. So the function he has is x of s is equal to uh, 2 plus 4, and it's uh, s minus 4 over s squared plus 16. Isn't that right? All right, so x of t. Well, we know for the two, that's just going to go as, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, x of t would be equal to two 
delta of t. And then now you've got the four over, sorry. Now you got four s over s squared plus 16, right? Mm -hmm. So take a look at this, four s over s squared plus 16. You can factor the bottom and cancel s minus four, right? You can do this. You don't need to. I mean, what isn't this? Isn't that s squared plus four squared? And s. This is the first part of this. Four s over s squared plus sixteen is this. And now the omega here is four, right? You all agree with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's. So I'm four. pretty sure that in the um, like in the homework, actually, the answer they give, they use like complex numbers. They can so, do that, but it's a waste of time. Just right. I'm just saying, like, cares. if you go by the homeworks, that's the way you learn. But like, this is this is acceptable, right? You're talking about conjugate pairs. Not for this one. He didn't use conjugate pairs. He would have done that if it, if it had a complex pole where they had a phase change, and it would be cosine of omega t plus theta. Then he'd use there'd be complex poles. But bear with well, me on this one so far. You all agree that this is a proper rendering of the 4s over s squared plus 16. So you can say plus, I'm just going to cut and paste this, right? That's the second part. What about the third? Now I have minus 4 times 4 over s squared plus 16. Well, I know that if I come out here, And when I have four, so let me do four times quantity four over s squared plus four squared, this is really going to be sine, right? And so there's a minus four in front of that. So I just put minus four, right, times this. And that's your answer. That's one answer of many. Now you can do something tricky here. You can combine the sine and the cosine together. You can change one into the other and, and add them together. And then you will get a single constant with a phase change. It'd be a cosine of 4t plus some phase change. But this is a perfectly legitimate rendering. Can you go over that? Cosine and sine part again. I get yeah. the delta. Can you can you go over that? Part you see this part right here. You have your book. Uh, not in front of me. It's in another room. Mm, that would help. Um, uh, if you <laughs> can, you get your book. Uh, yes. Why don't you walk over and get it? It's nice to work from bed. I'm going to break it off after this, all right? All right. Uh, look on page, the tables in the book are, is that 97, 96 to 97. So look on page 97 and flip on down to number nine on page 97. You got it? Yep. All right. You see, that's the sign, right? Now look at the cosine at 11. See it? Yeah. Those are transformed pairs you should know. And, and those are, that's what I use to break that thing up. All right, Nick? Oh, so you just did four, you did four over the denominator times S over the denominator? Well, this one right here, this, this normally is just going to be omega naught over, and this would be omega naught squared, right? And this would be omega naught in there. The four is just the scalar value I put in, in front of that because it was so in the problem statement. So this is the actual transform where omega naught there is four. Got it? Uh huh. All right, and for cosine, the only difference would be now there would be an S there. See right here? You can get rid of that four. 
All right, I, I think I see. Um, but there, in the final answer, there should just be one four scaling the sine. Is that correct? Well, Not the two of them. It's four times four is minus sixteen, right? See, it's four times s minus four. Uh, but it, in the properties, it's um, omega naught over s squared plus omega naught squared. All right. so and so four. this is true, correct? Yes. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is gone. My bad. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. I'm with you. I had an extra four. Thank you. All right. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you very much. I'm right. very Most rusty. Of the time, if you look on uh, Wolfram Alpha, they will do the inverse Laplace, correct? In the, in the Laplace. But the Fourier, they will not because they're assuming the transform goes to F, not omega. So they'll be off by 2 pi. Okay. All right. Y'all have a great weekend. Uh, so I'll get on group me yet today, but not now. I'm going to go out and watch my dog. Take care, guys. See right, you. Thank you. Any last questions or comments? Uh, I have a quick question. Um, I was, it, it, we haven't actually gone over this in class, but I was curious. I was reading through the book, and I glanced at what's called a bilateral Laplace transform. Don't worry about it. We're not going to use it. That's advanced. Don't worry about it. Okay. All right. That's, that's the only question I had. Thanks. Anything else? Uh, I had a general question as well um, about the upcoming test, whenever it would be. It would cover everything like up until that point? Like, would well, it still? I think I gave a wrap up of this earlier, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be time domain convolution, Laplace transforms, Fourier transforms, Fourier series analysis. Okay. And a five point bonus on DTFT. Uh, and the test is going to be out of how many points? Each problem is 10 points. Okay, so 40. So 40, plus 40 is 45. Plus okay. And you can, you know, do the math. It's, each problem is worth basically 25%. Okay. All right. Thank you. Cool. All right, and thanks. Get Octave or MATLAB or Python and because we're going to be using them extensively from here on out. All right. Enjoy your weekend. Stay out of grocery stores and bars, or stay out of bars at least. I don't think they're opening. Is anything, uh, they're all shut down downtown, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they I think they were ordered to uh, like shut down. down. Is Opal like a shutdown too? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm hoping not, because I plan on going to the Sportsplex tomorrow. No, 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 <laughs> that's going to be shut down. <laughs> well, for disc golf, I'll be outside playing disc oh, golf. All right, you can do that. We, I, I was... That, Not the actual sportsplex. It, right. it might be shut down. I don't know. I'm gone. Enjoy. Take care, guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. I got to shut this down. Somehow. Stop sharing.